What's going on guys? This is Mike Noid and today I'm going to be talking about my top 25 games of all time. So this might come as a shock to you guys, but I like to play video games sometimes. I've been playing games ever since I was a kid. I've played some really fun ones, some really bad ones, and everything in between. So it was really hard to narrow down only 25 games for this top 25 games of all time list. I had to think to myself, if I could only play 25 games for the rest of my life, what would they be? And I'm still in my early 20s, so my list has the potential to change in the future. But as of the day I'm making this video, this is my top 25 games of all time. Skylanders was a six game franchise that featured toys that would come to life when placed on a portal of power and play through platforming levels that involve you fighting enemies and solving puzzles in order to stop chaos from taking over Skylands. This was one of my favorite game franchises growing up and my favorite out of the six was the third game, Skylander Swap Force. In my opinion, this game had the best level design, visuals, and Skylanders, especially the ones that that allow you to swap halves and create bizarre swap abilities. The story is very straightforward, nothing too deep, but enough to motivate younger players to play through the game. And if the story mode wasn't enough, you also have bonus missions, arena challenges, and post-game content. Not only do I recommend Swap Force because I believe it's the best game in the series, but it will be easier to find figures for this game and the previous entries because of the billions of toys at the Vision sold. Based on the first season of the old TV series, Bakugan Battle Brawlers is a monster battle card game that features the main characters from the show and many different Bakugan. Bakugan come from another world that turns into small spheres on Earth but revert back to their giant sized forms during battle. The goal of the game is to fight other brawlers in various tournaments while stopping those with malicious intent. Winning battles all depend on your throwing phase, the cards you choose, and how you perform in various battle sequences. Honestly, you'll get more enjoyment from this game if you're a fan of the original show, but the game still looks pretty good, especially on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, and the gameplay is good enough for anyone to give it a try. So Fossil Fighters is pretty much a cult classic because of how overshadowed it is from the Pokemon games on the DS. This game is also a monster fighting game, but features dinosaurs, aka Vivasaurs. You battle with your Vivasaurs and aim to become the best fighter of Vivasaur Island, but what makes this game unique is that you have to dig up fossils to obtain your vivasaurs. Honestly, this is one of the best games on the DS that utilizes the touchscreen and microphone really well as you use the stylus to break the fossil and blow away the dust. The story is pretty crazy and involves ghosts and aliens, so there is definitely a lot of personality. It was hard for me to choose between this game and the second game, Fossil Fighters Champions, but honestly I think I enjoyed this game a little bit more, plus you have a love interest in this game, it's really funny. Animal Crossing New Horizons couldn't have came at a better time. And boy did I put a good amount of hours in this game. I'll admit this was my first Animal Crossing game so I can't really compare it to the other games in the series, but I'm confident to say that there was a good amount of content to enjoy. Foraging fruit, rocks, and sticks, digging up fossils, fishing, catching bugs, decorating your island and house, inviting villagers, paying off debt. I absolutely loved what was offered to us day one, and I had fun with the free updates that Animal Crossing New Horizons got over time. I think this is a must own game for any Switch user. One of Nintendo's newest IPs, Splatoon is a shooting game that's all about covering turf with paint. At least that's the mode I played the most on the Wii U. This is still by far one of my favorite online multiplayer games. Despite the system lacking any way to communicate with your teammates directly, the game had a single player mode if you just want to play through a story and ranked mode if you want to be more competitive. I prefer this game over the second game, mainly because the first game works really well with the Wii U gamepad since you can use the screen to look at your map and play mini games while you wait. To be quite honest with you, I slept on Astral Chain when it first came out, and I still regret it. It's one of the best action games you can play on the Switch. You can play as a cop who can control legions that you're attached to to fight off an alien invasion while still helping citizens. You got some of the best characters introduced in the game and an interesting story to keep you invested in seeing the game to the fullest, and some very sweet action sequences. This game doesn't get enough attention, especially for being a new Nintendo IP, so if you own a Switch, I recommend you give this a chance. Now do I consider Batman Arkham Knight to be the best Arkham game of the series? 
Absolutely not. But I did enjoy this game more than the others. I got this game when it first came out and it was the first game I got to play a Batman Arkham game without watching a full Let's Play series on YouTube. While I do think this game can use less Batmobile, you still have the fun bone breaking fights, the dark story, and a bunch of side missions that expand the Arkham universe. This may be a little corny to say, but this game really makes you feel like Batman. Mario and Luigi Bowser's inside story on the DS is just too great. The plot is all about Mario and Luigi working together with Bowser in an RPG adventure to stop Falful from using the Dark Star to basically conquer the world. The turn-based combat is straightforward yet fun since you are given the chance to do extra damage and dodge attacks. I think the best parts of the game is exploring the body of Bowser and defeating the enemies that are within his gut. They remade this game for the 3DS which is still a good version, however I think the DS version has more personality to it. Also you can play the DS version on the 3DS, so I don't think the remake was really necessary. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the greatest Mario Kart game ever made. You have the most characters, even some from other Nintendo franchises, fantastic courses, stellar music, making it one of the most competitive couch co-op games I've ever played. I will say that I put more time in Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, because Deluxe is pretty much a port with a few new characters, updated battle modes, and the ability to hold two items at once. But whenever I'm in the mood to throw some blue shells and get a gold trophy, I will always choose Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Switch. There's a reason why this game is the best selling Switch game of all time. As corny as this might sound to some people, I think Minecraft is a really fun game. Now I'm not a master builder or redstone engineer of any kind, I just like to go out, explore, and build myself a nice little settlement. This game is best played with other people since you're able to divide tasks so you guys can work on gathering materials and crafting a place to share together. This game is still receiving updates so there's always something new to discover when exploring your worlds and if you're creative enough, building structures out of the environment around you is always a blast. I just had so much fun with Super Mario Galaxy on the Wii. Not only do you have the best music in a Mario game, but the galaxies that Mario needs to platform in are absolutely beautiful. I'm still surprised I managed to beat this game as a kid because there are some very difficult levels in this game. And honestly, I appreciate the challenge in order to get all the stars. Now, I haven't got a chance to play the game on the Switch yet, but I can honestly say you should play the game on the Wii. You can find the console and the game for pretty cheap, and you don't have to worry about tracking down a copy of Super Mario 3D All-Stars either. Super Mario World was one of the games I played the most on my Super Nintendo when I was a kid. I mean, honestly, I think we all know that this game is a classic. This is some of the finest 2D platforming we've been blessed with, and many 2D platforming games take inspiration from Super Mario World. I don't know if kids nowadays will be able to experience the feeling of finding secret exits just by finding them on your own, but I'm glad I was able to experience that, which is what made the game that much special. Whether you decide to play Super Mario World on your SNES, Game Boy Advance, Virtual Consoles, the SNES Classic, Switch, Emulation, this game is a must play. Donkey Kong Country was the other game I played the most on my Super Nintendo. Just like Super Mario World, this game also has some spectacular 2D platforming. As a kid, I would have put Super Mario World higher on my list than Donkey Kong Country, but after revisiting the game now, I really like how difficult this game can get. The game to me never feels unfair. When you go into it without knowing anything, I mean you're going to die. It takes a good amount of skill and time to keep trying to successfully beat the game and try to get all the Kong letters. And to me, that's what makes this a great game. As you can tell, I love me some Nintendo 2D platforming games. And I just simply love Super Mario Bros. 3. The version I grew up with was the Super Mario All-Stars version with the better graphics and the updated music. I played the NES version before and I think that version is still playable and I can even see why people would prefer that version. But I personally prefer the SNES version because I'm just biased. This is the Mario game that introduced the overworld maps and brought a ton of new power ups like the Tanuki and Frog suits. I put a lot of time in this game and I still remember the time I beat Bowser as Luigi when I was a kid. 
Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales is a pretty recent game and I had the privilege to play and beat the game on the PS5. I really liked Marvel Spider-Man that's focused on a grown up Peter Parker, but the reason why I liked Miles Morales more was because of the story. Listen, I've seen Peter Parker as Spider-Man a bunch of times already over the years, so seeing someone like Miles Morales with his exaggerated swagger was a breath of fresh air for the Spider-Man character. As amazing as this game is, it may be too short for some people's liking, so I would at least recommend you wait for a sell for this game. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the only Zelda game I've beaten before and a good reason for that was the game was the best launch title for the Switch. This game is still one of the best looking Switch games and you can easily get lost in the gameplay as you explore the open world of Hyrule. There's just so much to do in Breath of the Wild that you can easily put 100 hours into this game and still have many more shrines to go to. This is definitely a must own Switch game. Fire Emblem Awakening was the first Fire Emblem game I played and it captivated me all the way to the end. It's been a while since I played Fire Emblem Awakening on the 3DS so I kind of forgot the exact details of the story but I know for sure characters like Robin, Krom, Lucina, Frederick, Darja, they all make the game worth trying. This was also the first time I played a tactical RPG and I really liked it. You have to remember stuff like the weapons triangle, when a character's weapon is on the verge of breaking, and making sure your Pegasus riders don't go near any enemies with a bow and arrow. Oh, you better pick a god and pray to avoid that scenario. That stuff might sound a bit too stressful for some, and that may be true. But in my opinion, that's a big part of the game's fun. Strategy is key in this game. Plus, you're able to pair up your characters in romantic relationships to create a kid that comes from the future, which <laughs> got me on board on the game. I have to say that Gen 5 is my favorite generation of Pokemon games. And my favorite games from this generation are Pokemon Black and White. Pokemon Black and White stand out from the other Pokemon games as they made it all about the new Pokemon, while the older Pokemon are only obtainable in the post game. This game also had an actual thought out story that involves the evil organization Team Plasma and a mysterious character named N. I still believe that the DS era of Pokemon games was Pokemon at its best, and Pokemon Black and White are prime examples in my opinion. Now I didn't think I was going to like this game when it was first teased, but I was wrong about Persona 5 Strikers. Persona 5 Strikers is a direct sequel off the original Persona 5 game, and instead of turn-based combat, you fight using Dynasty Warrior mechanics with some Persona 5 sprinkled in. This game stays true to the characters and the original gameplay, while bringing new characters and levels. The game is also shorter than the original Persona 5, so this may be easier for players to get into. You can still acquire and fuse new Personas and fight Shadows, so this is a fun and different way to to play Persona. I'll admit, I still haven't played the original Final Fantasy 7, so my opinion might change when I eventually get to that game. But I did have enough time to play through Final Fantasy 7 Remake that came out for the PlayStation 4 last year. Although the game is just one third of the original game, Final Fantasy 7 Remake has been completely remade from the ground up. You have current gen graphics with real time RPG gameplay while having some of the best orchestrated music I've ever heard. Some of the dialogue may be a little bit awkward, but I'm still a fan of the story of Midgard. And if you're lucky to be a PS5 owner, then you'll have access to the additional content so there's even more to enjoy from this glorious game. I played Persona 4 Golden just a few months before the game came out to Steam, so I experienced the game on the PlayStation Vita. It's amazing how you can play one of the best JRPG games in the palm of your hands. I mean you have the most likable characters, an interesting murder story, and some of the best turn based gameplay ever. Now the game might look a little bit rough since it was originally released on the PlayStation 2, I think the game still looks good, and being able to play the game on the go makes it much easier to pick up and do a bit of dungeon crawling. Whether you own a Vita or a PC, I highly recommend this game if you are ready to try out a JRPG. RPG. Bro, there's a reason why Fire Emblem 3 Houses won the Player's Choice Award at the Game Awards in 2019. Fire Emblem returned to a home console after being on the 3DS, and you can see the difference in quality. Three Houses 
features even more voice acting, the ability to assign any battle classes to your characters, it got rid of the weapons triangle and the ability to rewind time to make the game easier for beginners, and a story that branches into different paths depending on which house you choose to teach at the beginning of the game. Do I even need to mention the music in this game? It's delightful. And you're still able to be in a romantic relationship with one of the characters. Easily a 10 out of 10. Like I said earlier, I think Pokemon was at its best on the DS. And even though Gen 5 is my favorite Pokemon generation, my all time favorite Pokemon games are Heart Gold and Soul Silver. This is just a beautiful remake of the original Gold and Silver games, and additions like being able to walk with your Pokemon, encountering even more Pokemon, and the Pokewalker. God, kids nowadays don't even know that we already had a Pokemon Go, and it was this device. There's just so much to do in these Pokemon games, and I've enjoyed exploring the Johto and Kanto regions while battling my way to the top. I'm pretty sure by now you guys can tell I like RPGs, and still the best one by far I played is Persona 5 Royal. This game is just pure art. It's, it's pure art. From the god tier soundtrack, art style, dialogue, story, the menus, woo boy! You can get so much enjoyment from this game, it's insane. And since Royal is the updated version of Persona 5, you get a couple of additional characters that put a slight twist on the existing story and additional quality of life improvements that make the game the definitive way to play Persona 5. Listen, if you have the time and have the interest to play a JRPG, this will be the game that you must play. Don't you dare! sleep on this game. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is my all-time favorite game. This game celebrates a variety of gaming icons in a fun and intense fighting game. Your enjoyment for this game depends on whether you're good at it or you're not. Personally, I'm not that bad myself, which is why I love booting it up and just playing for a few minutes. Is this game perfect? No. The online is terrible, the all-star mode is gross, and coin battles aren't present in this game. However, you have have an incredibly large roster of characters, a great classic mode, a bunch of spirits you can try to collect in spirit board and adventure mode, plus being able to listen to over 1000 pieces of video game music is a very nice feature. Smash Ultimate is a game that I can easily put more hours into, and to me, being able to pick up and play a game for a few minutes of the day has become something I've been appreciating as my life has gone and busier. Super Smash Bros Ultimate deserves my number one spot. And those are my top 25 games of all time. I originally put this list together to be a part of Video Games for Fun's top 25 game showcase that features a bunch of people talking about their favorite video games of all time. So if you want to hear other people's gaming experiences and opinions, I recommend giving the showcase a watch. The link to part one will be in the description below. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what your favorite games of all time are down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and of course, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. And number 26 is Porky Pig.